Existing generation capacity depends on fossil fuel power plants. Steam turbine and gas turbine in a combined cycle power plant are the main types of power plants. Diesel type power plant are available but in a smaller scale. In combined cycle power stations there is an assembly of heat engines, gas turbines, steam turbines. In gas turbine, fresh atmospheric air flows through a compressor that brings a tire pressure. Heat then added by spring fuel in the air and ignites it so the compassion generate high temperature flow. This high temperature high pressure gas enters the turbine where it expands down the exhaust pressure producing a shaft workout put in the process. The turbine shaft work is used to drive the compressor and the electric generator that are coupled to the shaft. A heat recovery steam generator captures the exhaust heat from the gas turbine that would otherwise escape through exhaust stack. And create steam that spin steam turbine. Therefore, both gas and steam turbine work from the same source of heat, converting it to mechanical energy, which in turn drive electric generator. The flow of electric power is from power plants to switching station that generated power may have voltage level of 13.820 or 24 kV. At switching station, step-up transformers are located to raise the voltage to transmission levels. This step is essential to minimize the transmission losses and get economical cost for power transmission. Power transmission is an important section of the electrical power system. It transfers the generated electricity from the power plants to the main supply points by using transmission lines which are the connecting links between the generating stations and the distribution systems. The transmission network consists of transmission lines with voltage levels of 380 kV. 230 kV, 115 kV, and 69 kV. The 380 kV is provided if the electrical power is necessary to be transmitted to facilities whereas the 230 kV is used for power transmission in near cities. Switching stations are such as bulk supply points, BSP, and grid stations. 380 kV or 230 kV transmission voltage levels mostly exists in bulk supply points which are located at the boundary of the cities. The bulk supply point, 230 kV, feeds grid stations with 69 kV. Then the grid stations step down the voltage from 69 kV. 34.5 kV or 13.8 kV. The main components of the grid station are control room, transformers, switchgear, circuit breakers, disconnect switches, earthing switches, control panels, current transformers, and voltage transformers. Those grid stations supply power to distribution substations. The switchgear is divided into four compartments. The front upper compartment is for protective and measuring instruments, such as ammeter, voltmeter, and relays. The front lower compartment is for circuit breakers, which perform the isolator function of the feeders and can be withdrawn for inspection and maintenance. The rear upper compartment is for bus bars, 
and the rear lower compartment is for cables terminals. Each circuit breaker feeds a group of distribution substations, which are connected together as a ring. The majority of medium voltage networks are underground cables, which have a cross-section area 3 by 500 square millimeter. There are three types of loads that can be power supplied by grid stations. Commercial load, industrial load, and residential load. In the case of the commercial load such as a mall, and the industrial load such as a factory, a feeder goes from the grid station directly to a metered ring main unit located in each of the two load types. In the case of the residential load, there is a group of distribution substations in the network. Each of them consists of a ring main unit, a distribution transformer, and a low voltage panel. The ring main unit connects the primary feeder with the distribution transformer through MV cables, which have a cross section area 3 by 70 square millimeter. The distribution transformer is considered highly important equipment for the distribution and consumption of electrical energy, which steps down the voltage from 13.8 kV to 380 220 of a volt to make it suitable for regular electric power uses. In the low voltage panel, there is an internal connection through bus bar between the distribution transformer and the LV panel. The number of LV panels outgoing feeders depends on the transformer rating. For example, if we have a transformer rating of 1000 kV ampere, we will need an LV panel that has 8 outgoing feeders protected by a molded case circuit breaker. The outgoing feeder of LV has a cross section area, 4 by 300 square millimeter and feeds a mini pillar made of fiber for safety, and is not subject to increased corrosion due to weather conditions. Each fiber mini pillar has five outgoing feeders. Each of them has a cross-section area, 4 by 70 square millimeter and feeds the house service box. There are two types of kilowatt hours. Electromechanical meter, digital meter. For customers with loads up to 160 ampere the house service box contains whole current meters circuit breakers and terminal wires for customers with loads greater than 160 amps the house service box contains lv current transformer meters circuit breakers and terminal wires sometimes there are areas with low loads and isolated from the load center in these cases, they are fed by overhead lines. There is some distribution equipment installed onto the overhead lines, such as disconnect switches, and automatic circuit recloses, automatic voltage regulators, bypass switches and capacitors. Disconnect switches are used to connect the transformer to the line and isolate a dead section of the line from a live line. Automatic circuit recloses. 80% to 90% of the faults in distribution O primary feeders are from temporary causes. For example, insulator flashovers caused by lightning, birds or small animals. Also momentary contact between poorly insulated conductors due to wind and trees, etc. The resulting arcs frequently last as long as the circuit is energized. As a result of any of these faults, the line is de-energized. And in this case, the faults are known as non-persistent faults. The non-persistent faults are cleared by opening the substation breakers or the recloses. The line can then be reclosed immediately, in 3 seconds, and the service is restored to all customers. One of distribution substation type is a pole mounted transformer. A pole mounted transformer is fitted to suit loads of this area, and connected to the line, and protected by disconnect switches fitted with fuse links.
The number of LV panels outgoing feeders depends on the transformer rating and feeds the house service box through low voltage overhead lines. In case of the area with low loads is so far from the load center. There are some equipment that is installed on the line to compensate the voltage drop such as automatic voltage regulators and capacitors. The voltage on a circuit may fall below a specified level for some reasons such as connecting large motors to the system causes momentarily drop in the system voltage. To maintain line voltage at constant value, capacitors are used. Shunt capacitors installed in a distribution system will cause a voltage rise from the capacitor bank location back to the source. Capacitor improves the power factor for the system and allows more load to be connected to existing system. Another type of distribution substation is a platform mounted transformer. A platform mounted transformer is fitted to suit the loads of this area and connected to the line and protected by disconnects which is fitted with fuse links. The number of LV panels outgoing feeders depends on the transformer rating and feeds the house service box through low voltage overhead lines. We at the Saudi Electricity Company are committed to providing our employees with work and services with high efficiency and good performance.